Good afternoon, and today well, we celebrate St. John Henry Newman's 222nd birthday. So we wish him a happy birthday, and it's fitting that we're also in Heritage Month, a month where we look at the heritage of our university. St. Newman's certainly part of that, and his birthday here. Uh, we celebrate today, but what, I'm always thinking about what would, what would Newman want to say to us, maybe, or what, what could we bring forward from Newman that would speak to us as we're here celebrating our heritage and heritage month. And uh, I was thinking about what Newman says about a university being an alma mater. That is, that nourishing and loving mother. If you look up the definition of alma mater, like all the first ones just say, that school that you graduated from doesn't even like define what an alma mater is or why that term is used. But Newman himself used it a few times. As we know, he spoke about universities, but in a few different places he speaks about what makes a good university an alma mater and not just an institution. Because we are an institution. We have you know, tuition, we have accreditation, we have policies we got to follow. So in a way, we, we are an institution. But what makes a university an alma mater, this nourishing mother? First, he says here, while professing all sciences and speaking by the mouths of philosophers and sages, a university delights in the well-known appellation of alma mater. She is a mother who, after the pattern of the greatest and most heavenly of mothers, is, on the one hand, mater amabilis, lovable mother, and causa nostre letitiae, cause of our joy, and on the other, sedis sapientiae, seat of wisdom. So drawing on Newman's writings about university being an alma mater, I see maybe three ideas emerge. First, a university cares about each and every child. Each and every one of her child, children, as a mother, you know, cares for all of them individually, knows them by name, uh, loves each child. And he says, a university is according to the usual, usual designation, an alma mater, knowing her children one by one, not a foundry or a mint or a treadmill. Or I was thinking, why didn't he say uh, an assembly line? But that, that came after his time. But that idea, I sometimes felt like I was on an assembly line at different institutions I was at. But an alma mater is not that. Uh, again, caring for each, loving each, this personal love for everyone entrusted to her care university loves in that way. Second, a university prays for her children as a mother prays for her children. And here Newman, uh, in one place, draws in the example of St. Monica. St. Monica, the mother of Augustine, who throughout his teenage years and his young adult life did not live close to the faith, did not live close to a virtuous life, and this affected Monica greatly. It uh, is not something she just looked away from, but she was drawn to weep and pray for her son for years and years because she loved him and she wanted what was good for him. And so she implored the Lord to care for her son, to move his heart, to bring him back to himself, the Lord, and to bring him back to the good life. So uh, St. Monica being an example of an alma mater, recognizing that she has to pray for her children. She has to pray for her son, imploring the Lord to bring him back to what is good and what is true. And a university ought to do that because an alma mater cares about the earthly well-being of her children, but also the eternal well-being of her children. And we do that at the university through holistic education, of course, but also through prayer, bringing our children, the people of our community, before the Lord. Third, the university guides the child to what is true and what is good. Newman wrote, In every department of human learning, she is able to confute and put right those who would set knowledge against itself, or to make truth contradict truth, and would persuade the world that to be religious, you must be ignorant, and to be intellectual, you must be unbelieving. A university raises her children with integrity, bringing these things together in harmony, that fullness of faith and the fullness of truth. And this is why the Catholic Church establishes universities, uh, because the church 
cares about the whole person. And maybe more specifically, you know, the church doesn't establish universities, but people like religious communities, like the Adores of the Blood of Christ, founded this university with that in mind, to nourish the whole person, to bring together these different fields of knowledge and religion so that it might be have one, one house, this integrated life, bringing them together. As Newman would say, maybe strongly even, it will not satisfy me. What satisfies so many to have two independent systems, intellectual and religious, going at once side by side, a sort of division of labor, and only accidentally brought together. It will not satisfy me if religion is here and science there. That uh, is not a university that would satisfy him because these great truths of our lives are not meant to be separated. We might say they are distinct, but not separate. And St. John Paul II has a great image for how these things fit together, and he puts it at the beginning of one of his encyclicals. He says, faith and reason, like science and religion, are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth, so that by knowing and loving God, men and women may also come to know the fullness and truth about themselves. So to have faith and reason together, this religion and sciences together, we come to know who God is, we can enter into that loving relationship with Him, but also we come to understand who we are, the fullness of who we are as human beings. A true alma mater wants her children to flourish, to know God, and to become who they are meant to be. And that, of course, requires both faith and reason. So a university that is an alma mater, a loving and nourishing mother, and a mater amabilis, a lovable mother, is one who accomplishes these things. But the university is not something that's kind of living on its own. It's not something we look on as outsiders and watch it mother, especially not us here. Because we, we are the ones who comprise the university today. We are the ones who are called to take up this task of mothering in our own positions. That's kind of why we have a Heritage Month, to remember the heritage that we have, we have received and that we are called to participate in, this kind of act of, of mothering. And it takes all of us. We all care for each of our students or our peers and the members of our community individually. We pray for each other. We strive to live virtuously, uphold our values, and call others to do the same. We are linked to the seat of wisdom, striving for excellence in our fields, in our work, in our schoolwork. We integrate our faith and our work and our study into the one life that we live, but also into our community. It is my great prayer, certainly, that Newman will always be an alma mater for us and for many generations to come. And she will be, uh, if she does these things, kind of taking Newman's advice, what it means to be an alma mater, not just an institution, but truly a loving and nourishing mother. And we pray uh, today, uh, we ask that St. Newman pray for us, help us to live out our mission, uh, to honor his, his vision of a university, and to uh, draw us to the one whom he has found uh, to be the source of all of his fulfillment, God.